For the majority of patients that I see who have long-term conditions, then physical activity can actually form part of the treatment for that specific condition. But on top of that, it's really good for their mental health. It's good to get them out socialising with people, good for managing stress, for getting outdoors. So actually, for all of us, long-term condition or not, the wider health benefits of being active are just huge. Undeniably, if you ask a GP, the challenges of talking about physical activity in a GP setting are the time. On a typical day, I would have a patient sat in front of me who would have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, have um, problems with being overweight, um, and maybe some mental health as well, so depression and anxiety. Now, there's a different drug that I can prescribe for each of those, whereas actually, if I can encourage that patient and support them to increase their physical activity, then that can impact on all of those conditions and without any side effects. So often, I will bring a patient back specifically to talk about physical activity, if that's something that they've shown an interest in. I get a variety of reactions from my patients when I talk about physical activity, and mostly they're positive. I think patients often feel it's a breath of fresh air that the doctor's talking to them about something positive that they can do for themselves. Sometimes what I'll do is I will actually give them a physical activity prescription. So I might have printed off whatever the prescription is for their condition, for their blood pressure or diabetes. And then I'll get a bit of paper and whatever conversation we've had around physical activity and exercise, I'll actually write it down. I'll put their name on it. I'll put the date on it. I'll put whatever we've agreed the goal is. So whether that is 20 minutes of brisk walking or 20 squats every day, and I'll sign it. And I'll actually say to them, You've got two prescriptions here, they're both really important, but actually the exercise one will probably do you more good overall. I think for so long, GP practices have been places where, well, they haven't been beacons of good practice when it comes to physical activity. GPs tend to sit down all day, the receptionists sit down all day, you're expected to sit down and wait in the waiting room and then the first thing that's offered to you when you walk into a, into a consultation room is a seat. In primary care, we've got a really good opportunity to be role modelling and encouraging patients to be more active, especially because we're in the community, you know, we know our patients, we know the surrounding area. For example, I know that we have a park that is just about 200 metres walk in that direction from here. So we're well placed to be able to understand what our patient is able to do, what they might want to do, and also what's available locally for them to, to get active. We always have to think about those who are going to benefit the most. It's not pointless, but less helpful if we are investing in and promoting team sports in our environment for adults, for those who are already fit to enjoy and participate. When I do work with the physical activity providers, they can be, get quite frustrated because they actively want to recruit patients with long-term conditions into their physical activities. And as GPs and nurses and healthcare assistants, it's the same patients that we see quite a lot of and we're struggling to help them um, become more independent with managing their conditions. So if we work more closely with these physical activity providers, the dream would be that we could see these, this group of patients less because they're working with the physical activity providers and everybody's a winner if we can make that happen. So the Royal College of General Practitioners have prioritised physical activity and lifestyle for three years. And that's because I think they recognise that the NHS and GPs, we are managing predominantly healthcare conditions that are linked to our current lifestyles. So one of the things that we've done with the Royal College of GPs is we've created something called the Active Practice 
charter. So the active practice charter is, is recognition from the RCGP that a practice has taken steps to reduce sedentary behaviour for staff and patients, increase opportunities for physical activity for staff and patients, and also formed a relationship with a local physical activity provider so that they can have access to the patients in the practice. There are so many practices out there that are already doing great things to encourage both staff and patients to be more active and spend less time sitting. So this is a way of celebrating and giving them recognition. But also what we hope is that other practices will aspire to be active practices um, in order to gain the charter. So the, the National Moving Healthcare Professionals Programme has been running for several years and one of the key parts of that is to upskill and educate and make sure that healthcare professionals across the country understand the importance of physical activity um, and also feel adequately equipped to have those conversations in practice. There are so many ways that the GP practice, actually the practice itself, can encourage patients to be more active and staff. It's really important that staff are encouraged as well. Anything from what they put on their walls, their posters, what they're putting on their TV screens, all the way through to role modelling. So I recognise that as a GP, I'm constantly role modelling to my patients and my colleagues. So about six months ago, I actually, I'm not wearing it today, but I actually started wearing trainers and activewear to consult in. And six months on, um, I haven't received a single negative comment, not to my face anyway, and I found it's changed my behaviour in that I'm more likely to start talking about physical activity, but also in a consultation I'm much more likely to get up and demonstrate things, so demonstrating how to do a squat or how to do a dip or how to do a press up. Um, so a year and nearly, well just over a year ago, Parkrun and the RCGP collaborated to create something called the Parkrun Practice and what was really key was that we made it simple so for practices to sign up um, they really just need to make contact with their local Parkrun and, um, and pledge to, to promote Parkrun to their staff and to their patients and the local Parkrun may also come into the practice and talk to people, do presentations, they all do it differently um, and we're, we're thrilled, we're absolutely thrilled that more than one in seven GP practices across the UK have signed up to be Parkrun practices. On the 1st of June this year we um, we did a special park run. It was called GP Pledge to Park Run, and we were aiming for a thousand GPs. And we actually got more than two thousand GPs pledging, and more than five thousand GP practice staff. And I do believe it was one of the best turnouts to park run. The We Are Undefeatable campaign, I think, is is up there with two previous campaigns that have just created a whole shift in our mindset when it comes to physical activity. The first one being that we are superheroes, 2012 Paralympics, just amazing. The second one, 2015, which was This Girl Can, again, just like really delivered that message, really hard hitting message. It celebrates people with long term conditions doing whatever they can do and highlights the huge benefits of moving even just a little bit, especially if you do have a condition, whilst recognising that there will be days that you don't, because of your condition, you're limited as to what you can do. The one thing I would say to healthcare professionals is that if you can support a patient to become even just a little bit more active, I think that might be the most important thing that you ever do for that person. I've seen people's lives transformed and it's free and it's got some side effects, but they're all positive ones and it's available to all of us. Um, and then, you know, from a health point of view, it's really good for us as well.